Okay, in this video, I'm going to look at the two proportion Z test in R. And so the problem I have here is there are 74 Amazon shoppers, 30 of whom have returned at least one purchase in the uh, past year. Looks like a typo here. And in another sample, we have 103 Walmart shoppers, and 65 of those has, have returned at least one purchase in the past year. So we have two groups, Amazon shoppers and Walmart shoppers. Those are our sample sizes. And then we have yeses being whether that they return something, at least one purchase, and we have 30 and 65 for that. So the command is prop.test x equals, we're con going to concatenate here and put in the 30 and 65 yeses, 30, the 30 Amazon shoppers that returned a project product, a purchase, and the 65 uh, Walmart shoppers who returned at least one purchase. And then n equals concatenate 74 and 103. That's the 74 Amazon shoppers and the 103 Walmart shoppers. Um, for our course, we will use correct equal false, mainly because it comes out with the same answer as the Texas Instruments and with the formulas we're using in class. Some texts argue that you should correct for, um, do the uh, continuity correction, and that would, uh, make correct equal true the, wrong, the correct response, but there's actually some arguments about the essence of that. So we'll do the simplest thing and just say correct equal false. And so I'm going to run that. And you can see that I have the two proportions, 40% of Walmart and 63%, I'm sorry, 40% of Amazon and 63% of Walmart shoppers made at least one uh, return of purchase. And then we have a p-value of 0 0.003, so that's low. We're going to reject HO. And then we have a confidence interval here of minus 0.37 to minus 0.08. That is, would be that Amazon shoppers are somewhere between, or the proportion of Amazon shoppers who have made at least one return is about is between 37 and 8% lower than it is for, uh, for Walmart um, shoppers. Keep in mind the way I have this framed, it doesn't, it's not talking about it's talking about shoppers, not times they went there. So there's some other things that go in here as well. But that's that's how, how I have this. And it gives you this x squared, which is really chi squared test. Remember in when we worked them out in class by hand, or when we use a, a text instruments calculator, it gives you what a, a z test. Well it turns out, and we'll actually do a little bit more with the chi square uh, a little later in the class. Turns out that when you have de the degrees of freedom in a chi-square of one, you actually have a z-test squared. So if I take that 8.8191 and take the square root of it, well, we're going to get 2.969695. Now, so let me show you here on the calculator that Let's go ahead and do this from scratch here. A2 proportion Z test. And I've had 30 out of 74, 65 out of 103. Not equal to. Just want to know if there's a difference. And hit calculate. And you will see that the Z is minus 2.9696. In other words, just exactly what we took over here. We had the square root of the chi-squared value. So they're equivalent tests. And... If we did the confidence interval, stat, test, two props, the interval. Come, there we go. And the numbers are still in there. It's a 95% interval. And that should be 0 0.405. There it is, 0 0.405. 0.631, and then the interval itself, minus 3713, minus, there we go. So that, uh, you, this prop test will give you directly the 95% confidence interval, and for the test statistic, it'll give you the chi-squared test, which is the z-test squared. Okay, the next thing I have down here is really not something you necessarily need for a beginning class, but 
if you want to understand a little bit about R, or if you're going to take some more courses, uh, maybe this will help out a little bit. So what I did here was I said A equals the prop test, everything that I had up here, just the uh, proportion test, A equals that. So what I'm doing now is I'm creating an R object that includes that everything in that test. So there we go. You can see I have A, a list of nine. And I'm going to click here, and these are the things that are in there. It has a statistic, the number 8.82 or 8.819 so on. And it has some other things in here. Um, like the p-value and character names and all of that. Well, this A statistic, I can pull this out of here by saying A dollar sign statistic. In other words, treating this just like a data set. And so now I'm going to say B equals A statistic. Now I have to run this one first. So I run it, or I actually already had, then I do this. So it says go find B. Now if you want to print B and look at it, you actually have to write the letter B separately there. And you, you can see there, it pulled out that 8.81909. So now I'm just taking the square root of that and printing that. And there's the 2.96969 that is the Z value. I, may, I guess I could have put Z equals square root of B and then Z to make it a little more um, obvious what's going on there. But, but there it is.